At first glance, it seems that this is an ordinary girl sitting on a chair. But here she lifts her skirt, and under the skirt two more legs. They are shorter than the main pair of legs and are dressed in cute socks. The girl can move her second pair of legs a little, but they are too weak and cannot be leaned on. The unusual child's name is Josephine Myrtle Corbin. She was born in 1868 in Lincoln County, Tennessee, and immediately became a sensation. Doctors observed a rare pathology. The baby had a double pelvis. The upper part of the body was perfectly normal, but below the waist there was a split. A second pair of legs and a second genitals belonged to a twin sister who was unable to fully develop. An unusual child in an ordinary family. The Corbin family was completely ordinary. Father was a retired Civil War veteran. He fought on the Confederate side in the 43rd Infantry Regiment, was wounded in the arm and was discharged. After recovery from his injury, he settled in County Alabama, where he met his future wife, Nancy Sullen Williams. The couple resembled each other as brother and sister, but doctors who later examined the family were unable to establish their kinship. Soon the newlyweds moved to Lincoln County in Tennessee. Here they had healthy normal children, and then Myrtle was born. The baby immediately became a sensation in local newspapers. A child with four legs. Doctors have never seen anything like this. Immediately there were many people who wanted to look at the strange baby. And since the family was in a tight financial situation, Corbin began charging a small fee from visitors when the baby was only five weeks old. In 1870, when the girl was two years old, the Corbins returned to county to be close to their relatives. At that time, it was undeveloped countryside where everyone knew each other. So from the very childhood, Myrtle had to get used to people constantly staring at her unusual body. The girl learned to stay on her own legs. The right foot was turned inwards so that only the left leg was fully functional. The inner pair of legs has completely stopped growing. Myrtle could hardly control them, much less lean on them when walking. She could only move them a little. In addition, each of the defective legs had only three toes. Otherwise, Myrtle was a perfectly normal pretty girl, blue-eyed and with curly hair. Brilliant career of an unusual woman. The father quickly realized that he could make good money on the congenital deformity of his daughter. From a young age, he drove the girl all over the country, representing her at various fairs. When Myrtle turned 13, Corbin signed a contract with Barnum Circus. An unusual girl was offered a fabulous salary for those times, $250 a week. By today's standards, Myrtle's salary would be $6,000 a week, a decent amount for a woman in 19th century, when, as like today, a rare man could boast of such a solid income. The four-legged girl became a sensation. She was so popular that some people began to imitate her. Women attached an artificial pair of legs to the belt, passing them off as real. Some have gone even further. For example, to get the proper effect, another woman quietly sat behind the artist and put her legs between the legs of the first. Thus, the illusion of four legs was created. However, no one could overshadow the popularity of the real Myrtle Corbin. Growing up, Myrtle began performing at the Ringling Brothers Circus. She was most often seen in New York's largest amusement park, Coney Island which is visited by millions of people every year. The Boston newspaper, in its issue of November 22, 1895, mentioned Myrtle in the list of the most famous circus performers. The girl was offered unbelievable money for participating in shows. In 1886, her weekly salary was already $450, which is over $12,000 in terms of modern money. Myrtle traveled all over the country and was very broad-minded because of it. Visitors to her show have repeatedly noted the education of the girl. 
who could keep up the conversation on almost any topic. Family life. In 1885, Myrtle's younger sister, William Ann, married Hiram Bicknell. So, 19-year-old Myrtle met his brother, Dr. James Clinton Bicknell. It is not known for certain whether James Bicknell was a practicing doctor. It is only confirmed that he studied medicine. Myrtle and James got married two months later. At the request of her husband, the girl stopped performing and devoted herself to the family. In 1891, their first daughter, Nancy Estella, was born, and a few years later, their son, Clinton, was born. The family lived in Bono, Texas, and the 1910 census lists James Bicknell as a farmer. At the beginning of the 20th century, the family moved to Cleborn, where the rest of their children were born. According to various sources, the Bicknell couple had eight children, of which only four survived. All her children grew up healthy, none inherited the strange deformity. Unexpected death. It is not known exactly what prompted Myrtle Bicknell to return to the circus. Perhaps the economic situation of the family worsened. However, in 1909, she could be seen again in the Ringling Brothers Circus in Coney Island. The woman was already 41 year old, but she still received a good fee. Myrtle Corbin is without a doubt a greatest mystery of mankind. This woman does everything that ordinary women do. In addition, she is married and has four beautiful, healthy children. This was said about Myrtle in an article in the Ottawa Daily of August 1, 1913. It also noted that more than 600 people paid to see Myrtle Corbin in Coney Island. Despite her congenital defect, no one treated her as a disabled person. She led a full life and was able to support her family with the money she earned. The mind and kind nature of the woman compensated for her unusual appearance. In 1928, Myrtle Corbin contracted a skin infection. Now such a disease is easily treated with antibiotic. But at that time, the woman could not be helped. The disease progressed rapidly, and Myrtle passed away a few days later, just two weeks short after her 60th birthday. All sorts of collectors, doctors, and anatomists immediately bombarded Mr. Bicknell with offers to redeem the body of the deceased. Huge sums were offered to him, but the widower did not agree to any money. Moreover, Myrtle's grave was cemented to make sure no one could steal the body from the coffin. The case of four-legged Myrtle was the first to be described in the medical literature, but was not the only one. In 1888, a boy with three legs, Francesco Lentini, was born in Italy. A few more children with a similar pathology were born in 20th century. If previously they could only expect a career in the circus of freaks, Modern medicine has learned to cope with this pathology.